my name is PJ Metz, Education Evangelist at GitLab, and this video is made of a couple of videos that I made kind of early on in my career at GitLab, uh, where I walk through what's called the Learn GitLab project. Um, when you start a new uh, account at GitLab, this project is automatically assigned to you, and it contains several what are called issues that have tasks within them that help you learn how to use GitLab. Uh, I was kind of new to GitLab at the time, and I knew a little bit, so I figured this was, one, a good way for me to familiarize myself with the product at the company I worked for, and it was a good way to show other people what they were getting as well. And I had to do it in two sections. I couldn't do it all at once. I was live streaming on Twitch, and when you live stream on Twitch, you have a audience, you sometimes get distracted, and these streams that I did were originally about um, 45 minutes to an hour long each, and this video is going to be edited versions of those things. I'm doing my best to cut out the extraneous stuff where I'm talking about Mountain Dew or I'm talking about uh, someone asked what shirt I was wearing. I was wearing an America Online tank top and they wanted to know where I got it. So the normal stuff that happens in a Twitch talk show style uh, video, I am trying to get rid of that stuff. So what you're going to see is you might see some jumps and edits. There's background music. The background music might not sync up. Sync up. But the reason I'm doing this is because I want to have kind of just what you need in order to learn GitLab. Uh, there will be uh, down underneath here in the description, you'll see some times that you can click on. It'll take you directly to a section of the video. And I hope that this is helpful for you. And I hope that you enjoy uh, Learn GitLab with PJ. Learn GitLab. And inside of it, you'll see this README. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So uh, there's a bunch of tutorials. It's contained in an issue, and there's certain tasks you have to complete. Um, you can view them by going to up here. We have issues, and you can view them as a list or as Kanban boards. And you complete each tutorial by working through the open list. When you complete it, you can drag the issue card to the close list, and then you move on to the next one. You can also do this in just regular um, lists, and you can just mark them as closed. So issues is the main way that GitLab uh, really kind of creates a uh, uh, community, well not community involvement, but like, uh, what's that word called? Collaboration, why can't I think of the word collaboration? It's the way it creates collaboration. You open an issue to talk about what's going on in the code and what you want to change and what you want to do differently, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so if you don't need it, you can delete it here in the settings, but um, I just want to take a second and sort of just go through what we're looking at here. So first off, when you're in a project like we are, collapse that, uh, up top you've got the icon, the name of it, a project ID. It'll tell you how many commits, how many branches there are, how many tags, uh, and how much storage and you're using and how much is in the uh, files. Um, up here is where you can switch branches. Uh, you can see that this is old. We uh, made the the main branch, uh, the default branch is now main. Um, I can actually change that really quickly, very easily. So let's add a new branch. I'm gonna call this one main, based on master. I'm gonna go here to branches, go to the project settings, and in project settings, I can change what the default branch branches. I believe in you, come on, there we go, okay. And I can just change the default to main. Uh, from now on, starting with GitLab 14, um, or possibly 14.1, which just released on the 22nd, five days ago, uh, the default branch will be main automatically on newly created uh, stuff. So let's go back here to the repo. And, oh no, we gotta go back to branches. And now that main is the default. You can see it's marked as default. Master is protected, but I am the uh, uh, maintainer of this project, so I can delete the protected branch. There we go. You'll notice that main uh, on this particular project is not protected, and that's okay. And um, because it's just me in here, no one else has access. Like here, if you go to members, Just me, that's in around, right? And I'm the owner, I'm not even a maintainer, I'm the owner. 
Uh, so no one else is gonna get in here. Uh, let me make sure it's private real quick. It should be. Yeah, it's private, so no one can even find it. If you have a public one, you can, of course, uh, it's very smart to protect your branches and keep anything from happening to them. It also keeps people who have lower access levels from being able to make unapproved changes. So that's really useful as well. So go back to main page here. So now we're on main. This is where you can add a file or upload a file if you got it on your local machine. You can create a new branch. You can create a new tag. Um, this is the web IDE. So if I wanted to work with some files in here in an IDE, I can click this and it opens it up as like a small IDE right in my browser. Uh, it gives me the files right here. A UI for committing uh, to the Git, which is fantastic. Uh, new file, upload file, new folder, all that stuff. Let's look in the readme here. Oh yeah, you can see it's written in Markdown. Little preview tab right here. Everything you need is right in the browser. It's fantastic. Uh, let's go back. One of the things we don't have here is the CICD, but because this is learning GitLab, I would bet we're going to add one later. So they told us in the readme to go to issues in the left sidebar. So here's issues and here it is as a list. It shows me all of the things I have to do in order to finish. And then we've got boards, which will show me this is what's open. This is what you need to do and then close and you can click and drag things into the closed one, which is fantastic. It's, I mean, it's just really well organized. Personally, I prefer the list. Um, sometimes I'm visually oriented, but I usually like a list better than the uh, visual Kanban boards, but I have used Kanban boards before too. All right, so right here, it's sign up for GitLab. And to be honest, I already did that because like, look, there's my profile. So this one is, is done. I uh, I already did it. I did what I was supposed to do. I gave it a thumbs up and I'm going to click close issue. This issue is now closed, which means it still exists, but we don't have to worry about it anymore. It moves to a different area. All right, let's go back to our list. Number two, create or import your code into your project, into the repo. You've already created your group and project within GitLab. Review the hierarchy. Once you're within your project, you can easily create or import repositories. So with GitLab groups, you can assemble related projects together, grant members access to several projects at once. So for instance, at work, I'm a part of the community relations group and the education subgroup. And that the community relations group gives me access to everything in there. And of course, the education one, that's more specific to mine and my manager's uh, goals and projects. You can also have subgroups, like it says. Projects, one or multiple projects for hosting a code base. Use it as an issue tracker, uh, collaborate on code, and build, test, and deploy with built-in GitLab CI CD, which we'll probably talk more about later. All right, you can also import an existing repository by providing the Git URL. So for instance, let's say you're on GitHub and you, you're making a move to GitLab. It's pretty easy to uh, do so. So check it out. We're going to do projects in the top navigation bar, then click your projects. Select the project you've created, then select repository. Once on the repository page, you can select the plus icon to add or import files, and you can review full documentation on creating repositories in GitLab. All of this stuff is made in Markdown. Um, if I click edit, you can see this is all written in Markdown in the issue, and it automatically uh, creates this beautiful, nicely organized, pretty stuff. Okay, so to show you what they're talking about, click projects and then click your projects. This is all different now. Uh, since GitLab 14, instead of having projects up here, it's all under menu. So in projects, let's look at your new favorite poem, which is the website I build with Brandon Minnick. So what I did is I uh, I added this uh, from 
uh, GitHub. I was able to import it. And it's got everything I need. It's got my README, uh, which is down here, all nice and organized. It's got um, Git Ignore. It's got all my files. So if you look in here, you can see my pages. Look at, yeah, index. And let's say I needed to fix something real quick, like um, just like I made a small like spelling mistake. I can just edit this file, the CSHTML file here, or I can open it in a web IDE. And yeah, Adrian, uh, GitLab does have its own flavor of markdown. I don't know what the specific differences are, but I think it's based on cram down, if I remember correctly. And here's the docs for that. Uh, so that was just an example of showing what I need. So let's do, if I need a, pretend I need a whole new project. Go to my profile. Let's go to my, I have a group, oh, PJ Awesome group. Let's say I wanted to create a new project. New project. Blank. There's templates, I can import a project and I can get it right from GitHub. And as long as you authenticate with GitHub and connect it to your GitHub account, that's it. So I've already done this before uh, because I did my importing earlier. So let's say I wanted to bring, uh, doo -doo -doo. Uh, the hello world, literally the first thing I ever did. I'd be like, import that please. And let's head to the issues. And again, you can uh, collapse this. And the only reason it's like that is because I'm zoomed in. If you're at normal, it's always open. So you can see everything that's over here. You can look at merge requests, which are called pull requests in GitHub, um, CICD here. And when you hover, it gives you um, some options as well. But I don't have any CICD right now because uh, I haven't set it up. So let's go back to the repo and let's zoom in again. So uh, I already did this. I completed all my tasks. It even shows you if you have tasks inside of it, it creates this right there. Marked it all, imported files, and it's closed. We are moving right along, aren't we, folks? All right. Create slash import issues to collaborate on ideas and plan work. But as you can see, I already did this one before. So issues allow you and your team to discuss proposals before and during implementation. They can be used for a variety of other purposes, customized to your needs and workflow. Uh, they're always associated with a specific project. So when you make an issue, it needs to be within that specific project. Um, there is also something called epics, but that's a like ultimate GitLab thing. Uh, so unless you're at a company that's paying for the ultimate licenses, you're probably not gonna be working with epics mostly. <clears throat> so, um, if you have multiple projects in a group, you can view issues at the group level as well. And you can review this issue documentation everywhere. Well, not everywhere, but specifically at this link, but we're good. Uh, existing issues or tickets, you can import them as long as they are uh, formatted as a CSV file and there's an import process for that. So reasons to have this is to discuss the implementation of a new idea, to track tasks. I know that my boss and I use it when we've got an idea, for instance, DJ, you should probably host a Twitch show where you introduce GitLab to people and talk about how to use it. I was like, okay, but what would that format look like? And all of this takes place inside of an issue in comments. So you can have designs here, you can do that. You can have, uh, you can see all recent activity. And then down here, you can make comments. Um, so as you can see, Markdown and Quick Actions are supported. We have s some specific quick actions related to GitLab that are pretty cool. We do have, <laughs> there's one that's like a shrug. Where is it? Yeah, just shrug comment. <laughs> Actually, let me try that right now. And comment, boop. 
I love you, Internet. I love you so much. All right. Um, so, yeah, you can do your comments and you do a back and forth. And then eventually, once you've either completed the task the issue is for or it's no longer relevant or, um, for instance, you can have milestones attached to them. Once the milestones passed, you can close it. Let's close that. All right, so when you go to projects, you pick a project, uh, you can select issues, you can make new issues very easily. Uh, if you're looking at the full list, there's just a blue new issue button. Boop. All of this stuff. Let's go over making a new issue, actually. It's pretty straightforward. So, hey, big blue button. Here's a title. You can have um, what are called templates. And that would show up here, but because this project doesn't have any templates right now, uh, none are showing up. So normally this drop down says uh, issue like bug report, for instance, and so you can see add description templates to help your contributors communicate effectively. And this takes you to what you can do and you can read more. All right, so you would make your title, what's your description? You can assign it to somebody. Uh, I usually assign it to myself um, to make sure that it shows up for me because when it's assigned to you, it shows up here under the issues link and it shows up as a little like, whoop, you have a issue here. Uh, this is merge request there. If you have a merge request that you're responsible for, it pops up there. And then to-do list. Uh, we'll talk more about to-do list later on. Uh, you can make it confidential, you can add a milestone right here, you can add labels, and you can make a due date. And then you would just create it and it would show up. So we just finished that. We know all about issues now, so we can close it. Nailed it. We get, guys, we're doing great. We're doing really well. I'm very proud of us. So that's closed. Let's head back to the issues. All right, set up CICD. And you can see, like, I've already done this before, but we're going to... Pretend I haven't, y'all. Alright. CICD stands for Continuous Iteration, Continuous Development, or Continuous Deployment. And it is a process by which you are changing code and iterating and making changes to uh, a code base and simultaneously having the ability to deploy it somewhere or to uh, push it back to production and GitLab has a very heavily automated set of how CI CD works. So, so integration, like I said, works by pushing small changes to the code base in a Git repository. And for every push, it runs a pipeline full of scripts that builds, tests, and validates that code before it ends up merged into your main branch. So this is a way of making sure that the code you're writing doesn't break stuff like a Limp Bizkit song. Delivery and deployment is uh, deploying the application production at every push to the default branch. Specifically, delivery is uh, like setting it up for that and then you manually push it and deployment automatically does it. So to show you, to go to Divas, I have uh, the CI CD set up on Divas. And if we go to the editor, so your CI CD is written in YAML which is a uh, is not yet another markup language. And the first thing we do is we declare an image to use. And I'm going to show you in the pipeline what all this looks like too. Uh, a couple scripts run to make sure that we've got everything updated and installed and everything's ready to do what it needs to do. I got all of this from an article that taught me how to do CI CD to push to Heroku, where my divas are hosted. Uh, you declare stages at the beginning. And then you say what stage each job, like this is a job here, job called production. It's deploying, it's the stage of production, it's using a Ruby image. And then this script here pushes it to Heroku. And this is directly from Heroku about how to do it. When this runs, it only does it on the main branch. When this runs, so it reads it reads an update to main, the pipeline runs, when it gets down to this job, 
it automatically pushes those changes to Heroku, and then on Heroku's end, it flips it around and uh, pushes the code into there, and it runs it over there, and then you can tweet at Shania Bot. Again, as far as I'm concerned, it's black magic. I really... The ins and outs... Not for me. So let me show you what those pipelines look like when they're running, and you'll see a bunch that have failed probably in the past. Oh, it's been doing pretty well. So it shows you all the pipelines that you've run in the past. So I've done some updates to the NSYNC JavaScript, to Shania, um, changed the date on some of them. And when you're looking at these pipelines, if you click here on the status, it pulls you into a visual and it shows you the job. Remember that job was called production. So we've got production here and here's the full log for it. And it shows you everything that was happening. If there's an error, it'll tell you what's going on. You can see this is the script that pushes it to Heroku. And these keys are inside of uh, Heroku. So these are uh, variables that live at Heroku. It knows what the app is and it knows what the API key is. There's to the deploy. See, it's pushing, uh, it's, it says it's a node app detected. It creates a runtime environment. It puts all this stuff in, installs the binaries, builds it, build succeeded, you're good. And then it cleans it up and it says, hey, job done. Like I said, it's pretty dope. Thank you. Thank you. That's enough of that. <laughs> Um, so that's how that pipeline looks. So let's head back to the Learn GitLab project and let's see what they want us to do for CI CD. You can watch a demo, you can read the docs. So it says read the following documentation how GitLab CI CD works, pipeline architectures, basic workflow, and a step by step guide. When you're ready, select CI CD and start setting up the CI CD in your project. So because this like uh, this project and the issues are telling you to go and set up CI CD in another project. So it's kind of this cool parallel thing where this project helps you learn while you're setting up another project. So to make, let's say, what did I just import? Oh, that fake hello world. So there's a bunch of options up at the top, um, adding a license, change law, contributing, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you, AJ. How are you not following me already, AJ? So all I did there was um, from the main project page, leave. Uh, there's a button for set up CI CD, just a quick action here. And if you create a new pipeline, it just automatically makes the file that you need for it, which is called .gitlab-ci.yml. You can see it's a template. It obviously, you, you do, if you're throwing a template down, you got to make sure to check and see if it needs to change anything before it runs for your project. You can see that uh, it's got some information about what this is. So first you declare your stages, build, test, deploy. You create a job that you can name almost anything. So you're like, this is called build job. It's stage is build, the script, and it just has two echoes, just says those things. Um, unit test job, echo running tests, sleeps for 60 seconds, and then another echo. Uh, a lint, you can run lint in your CI CD. And then you can deploy it. And this is something it'll run because it's just a bunch of echoes which is fun. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep this. I'm gonna say created GitLab CI YML file and commit that. And then it's gonna run that pipeline. So it says, hey, this pipeline's running. You can click into it. And it shows you your jobs, each individual job under an individual stage, right? So you can see build job is completed. When we click into it, 
find that echo. Yeah, echo compiling the code. Compile complete. Obviously, it's not really doing anything. It's just an echo. But um, you'll see up here at the top, it says running with GitLab runner 14.1.0 RCL and then a bunch of numbers. And GitLab runner is something I did want to talk about. RCI CD only works with what are called GitLab runners, which are written in Go. And they essentially take your YAML and make it work. Uh, you have to have a runner. Um, this is using what's called a shared runner. That just means it just it exists and kind of everyone on GitLab.com has access to it. So if they're really busy, I mean, there's tons of them, but if they're busy, your job takes a little longer. So let's say you've got a big company and you want to use GitLab, but you're like, well, we don't want to use the shared runners necessarily. Also, we want to make sure that our runners are perfectly optimized for our work. Well, you can make your own runner. And I was actually doing this uh, last night. I was practicing CICD and I was making runners on my uh, machine. And you can actually, let me pull up my terminal. That, oh, it's like, that's such a small terminal. Uh, let me see, GitLab runner. It's just a uh, status. Yeah. And I started uh, a few GitLab runners on here. And if I do a list, it'll show you. So I have one with a default description, I have one with the tags, and one for CICD certification. I was basically making these as part of practicing learning GitLab last night. Um, that process for making your own uh, runners is well documented, but you have to have a runner and a .gitlab-ci.yml file in order to do CI CD. You can see it uses a lot of Docker um, images, runs everything inside of that, and then just you know, does its thing. So that's CICD. Let's go back to learn GitLab. We can mark that issue as closed. Set up CICD, moving that over here. That's closed now. And if you click into it, you'll see it's no longer there. So if you move it on the Kanban board, it automatically closes it for you, which is great. Uh, first merge request. Uh, like I said earlier, GitLab, we call them merge requests. You might know them as pull requests. Uh, we see it as you're asking for something to be merged into the main code. So this lets you uh, visualize and collaborate on proposed changes to source code that exists as commits on a given Git branch. Yeah, lets you see what you're trying to do. So if you go to projects, you can create a merge request. So I'm going to, let's do this in divas. And I'll just do it with the readme because that's, I'm not trying to change anything crazy today. So let's head into Web IDE. And one of the cool things we have, by the way, um, is I've integrated with Gitpod, which is something available to uh, people with GitLab.com. Gitpod creates Visual Studio code directly in the browser. And this is fully integrated with GitLab. And now, I can work with VS Code directly in my browser. And I never have to pull anything locally. And so I don't have to worry about pushing and pulling and fetching and all that. It's just right in VS Code right here. You can see it gives me a unique URL up here. And here's all of my Diva stuff right there. Let's zoom in a little bit. And I said I wanted to mess with the README. Do, 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 do. I should tag Chloe here. That's what I'll do. I'll tag our Twitters. Do that. So let's. Water. And let's add my Twitter. And vein. I 
always do that. Mets and Aranid. Okay. So I have done that here uh, in Git pod, which is again, just VS code instance, right in my browser. I'm still on edge. And let's head to the Git and we'll see that there are changes to read me. Um, stays changes. So this to commit on main, but I don't want to commit on main. I want to commit to a new branch. Let's see, commit, commit, page, no. So check out two. Let's create a new branch called changed readme. Let's uh, actually, let's do djm readme change. There we go. All right, so now here I am. I'm on the new branch because I did all this in uh, git pod, which is VS code. Um, I'm on the new branch. I've got the stage changes here. I'm going to commit by message. Changed readme to add Twitter account for Chloe and PJ. Oh, four characters over. Oh, that's right. The message has to be short. Uh, added Twitter links. There we go. Um, I can go ahead and commit that. So that's committed now. And I can push it and so you'll notice I created this the branch here in Gitpod. technically there's no upstream for it it's like hey that doesn't exist in the repository do you want to would you like to publish it and so it gives you that option to go ahead and do that just like in VS Code just like I mean it is it's VS, it's VS Code y'all like this is all right all of that's there. We are in this. We can do, 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 head back. Steve is live. Gonna refresh this just to be sure. DJM read me change. And here's the branch. And you'll see right here. So I've updated that. I've got a branch and we need a merge request. So we've got the branch. We need to ask to merge it. So we've got the source branch is going to be PJM readme. Target branch is main. Title. This is a big one. Um, inside the description, you should always put why you're doing it. Um, always saying why is just, it's a really good idea because that way the person who's doing the merge request for you, who's actually merging them together, knows why you made it. Don't just tell me what you did, tell me why you did it, because we need some reasoning. We can't just merge everything in. Telling us why helps us move that along a lot faster. Okay, I saw, you can assign it to whoever is responsible for merging it. You can delete the source branch once you're doing it. You create the merge request. This is what the merge request looks like. It tells you what's going into what. It says approval is optional. You can ask for people to approve. And then finally, if you're able to merge, you can do this and you're gonna see that I'm able to because I'm the only person on this project. I click merge and it's merged. And then the source branch gets deleted. There's no pipeline because I deleted it. Let's look at making milestones. So milestones are a way to track issues, uh, merge requests, et cetera, et cetera. And it's a way to keep track of what's due, what's what's coming up, stuff like that. Uh, I set up my milestones for work last week. And my boss and I, we work in two week milestones with the final milestone being a three week milestone. 
And we're both pretty good at uh, sort of spreading out the work uh, and making it so that um, it's not a, uh, a sprint at the end to just cram a bunch of stuff in there. So let's talk about how we're going to do this. As always, documentation link right here. But we're going to go to projects, your project, select the project you've created. Click on issues, then milestones. So if we were in learn GitLab, that'd be right there. Click new milestone and then name it, start net and create milestone. So let's head to say divas. So we're going to go issues, milestones, new milestone. We're going to call this one forever. We'll have it start today. We'll have it end on September 3rd, which is the first day of Halloween Horror Nights in Orlando. Countdown milestone to HHN Orlando. For those of you that don't know, Halloween Horror Nights is my favorite time of year. You can write and mark down if you want. I wanted to italicize HHN. Do that, create milestone. Take me right to it. Then this is the milestone, but there's nothing in it. Uh, you would have to go to the issue. So if you want to add it, there's a, first off there are, as you can see, uh, two sidebars when you're looking at GitLab. There's one down here. That's, uh, the one that you end up using a lot. And when you're in an issue or something that has some properties and characteristics, it's got your assignees, your milestones, due dates, etc. So if we want to add a milestone, this is forever that we just created. Now that milestone is connected to this issue. So if I wanted to go to milestones, I can go up to menu milestones. And it'll take a second. Here's the milestone. And there we can see it. Now there's an issue in here. Scroll down. It's unstarted. It's open. It's unassigned. All I have to do is assign that to somebody. Assigning it to myself. We'll go back to milestones. And now it's moved from unstarted open and unassigned to open and assigned uh assigning issues is a great way to uh keep track of who's doing what um you know multiple people assigned uh to an issue and then it uh lets people see what they're responsible for uh you'll notice now that i've assigned that to myself up here on the top right is issues and i'm gonna zoom in just a little bit to make this a little easier for you guys so up here is issues when you're looking at the list Dip, 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 down here, picked up. Yep, that's where I put all my pictures that I needed for my README. That's the issue I just assigned to myself. It now shows up here that you can use as a sort of reminder of what it is you need to be doing. So those are the issues there. Any merge requests would be right here. And then this is actually to do. If you're tagged or assigned, it sticks it in your to do. You can be like, ah. Thanks, to-do list. I'm done with that. It doesn't remove you as an assignee. If you've been assigned, it just gets rid of that notification. I'm still assigned to the issue that I just had. See? The only way to get rid of myself? Literally unassigned. So. Let's go back. Projects, learn GitLab. Okay. I'll head to issues, do list. That's a boop, bop, beep, boop. I forgot, uh, it can have a hard time when you click a to do item. It takes a second to reload uh, to because it's a change inside of the edit. So it's like remaking it every time. 
Uh, so now we can assign issues, which we did while viewing an issue. Good thing about this is um, when you're in an issue, it can actually show you what's happening inside that issue over time. You get a little history timeline down here. All right, go back to that list. We need to mark this as completed. All right, next is invite a colleague. I'm gonna invite all of you, everyone who watches this. So one of the things that I always talk about is um, being an individual developer versus being a part of a team. And if you're part of a team, I feel like GitLab is great for collaborating. Uh, everybody at GitLab uses GitLab. Uh, it's literally, we have Slack, but if you're having a conversation in Slack about something, almost always someone's like, hey, let's move this to GitLab. And what we do is we create an issue for it. So it's so, it's got so many great tools, but a lot of those tools are for collaboration. So if like you're an individual developer and you're doing something all by yourself, it might be that GitLab isn't right for you. If you're doing CI CD though, I mean, I think there would be reason to consider it at least. But our big thing that we're really good at is collaboration, is creating an environment where everybody can participate, where everyone can contribute, and where people can excel as a team because you don't have to leave GitLab to have all these great tools for teamwork. You don't have to go and get another app and connect it to your repository. It's all inside GitLab, all in one, the DevOps solution. So when you've got a team, obviously you don't want everyone to be the owner of the repo and be able to delete and commit to main and to be able to force push and all that stuff. You wanna uh, limit the access of certain members, you know? Let's say you're running an open source project and you've got people who wanna contribute. You don't want them to have access to absolutely everything that can be a security risk. So you can assign them access levels. You can make them developer, maintainer, owner. You probably wanna to, want to make someone owner, but making them a maintainer if they're well trusted. Um, and we got documentation on this. So when you're in projects, you go to your project settings and members and you invite them by entering their email. And that's gonna be right up here. Project information, remember this is the sidebar over here. Project information, members. I think there's technically a um, a bot that's a member here. But you can see who's already a member. You can see where they came from, if they're a direct member of the group or if they were added in because they're part of another group that has access. When they got it, when their access expires and what their maximum role is within the project. You can leave the group if you want, but uh, not recommended. So when you're inviting people, it can be by email address or GitLab member. You can give them a role, guest reporter, developer, maintainer. Uh, when their access expires, you can invite them or you can import. And as also, you can invite a whole group from GitLab. I, don't, I only have two groups in my GitLab instance. Obviously, there's a lot more if you're using the, uh, the SaaS version of GitLab. So that's, oh no, there we go. That's that. I'm gonna mark this as done. I'm not inviting anyone to my personal group. Thank you very much. And then we close the issue. That's closed, head to the list. Now this is where we start to actually learn what GitLab gets you. So the free version of GitLab, totally free, no time limit. There are some restrictions. Uh, CI CD minutes, for instance, you only get a certain amount of CI CD minutes with the free tier. Um, but uh, obviously when you're getting into like paid GitLab, you're gonna get a lot more features. That, I mean, that's how description services work, really. Didn't have to tell you that. Um, if you wanna upgrade it, you do it on the billing page and you can find the billing page in the account by clicking on the avatar. So while I have you here, I mean, look, like this isn't just a stream of me playing video games. This is me showing you all what my my job has. So again, free. Uh, you, gotta, you bring your own CI runners in order to use the CI CD. 
uh, 400 CICD minutes per month. Uh, if it's a self-managed, then your self-managed runners are for you. Uh, that's that's that. Um, premium, $19 per user per month, but you bill it annually. Um, and then you get all of this plus uh, some better, better stuff. Just like it's, it's the best that you can get. Um, advanced security testing for like uh, DAST and I think SAST as well. Um, container scanning, fuzz testing, stuff I don't know. Uh, portfolio management, you get 50,000 CICD minutes per month. So if you're doing a lot of CICD, then you need that. So that's the uh, stuff you can get for that. Now, one of the cool things that I do is I'm on the education team. Now, GitLab for education, we offer uh, free licenses for educational institutions to use for education or research. So if you're using it in a classroom, free. If you're using it for research, free. All of that, totally free, you just have to apply. Um, if you want to use it for like your campus, like everyone on campus, then that's a totally different um, subscription. For a classroom, say you're teaching computer science and you want to do some DevOps stuff because you want your students to be prepared for the work environment they'll be joining, then you can get those licenses for total frizzle. That's free. Um, We've also got uh, some student spotlights. We've got uh, hackathons. We're always looking for contributors. Everybody can contribute. Um, we've got some case studies of schools that have used it really well. And that's constantly evolving and changing and we're always bringing more and more and more um, schools on. We just recently hit over a million active users using the free uh, seats that we provide. And like we said, you can use it in um, research as well. So as long as your research isn't for turning a profit, uh, you're allowed to use it. So tell people, you know, what we got. All right, let's go back. Issues. Go ahead and mark that as completed. Help and resources. GitLab is open source, community first. Um, we are an open core company. Uh, literally, you can come in, you can get it free. You can start contributing to GitLab immediately to our docs, to the project itself. Um, and if you stick around enough, you can become a GitLab hero. And if you, beyond that, we even have like a, um, a core team, which is pretty cool. So GitLab hero program. We're looking at people in the community that are really doing a lot with GitLab and participating in our open source stuff. And we make you a GitLab hero and you can uh, apply here. You know, this is just the way that we try and keep our community engaged. And you can see we've got contributors, heroes, and superheroes. And a contributor, you've got five merged MRs or one really good one. Uh, to improve GitLab. And that's, again, that's the application itself, the website or the docs. We are always looking for people to contribute to uh, what we're doing. So support team is for paying customers, but account related issues, uh, you can always uh, get on our support page. So again, our docs are here at docs.gitlab.com. And search for anything so let's say you want to do cloud deployment we've got docs on how you can use GitLab to deploy directly to the cloud using your ci cd um you can even run uh aws commands directly from the ci cd and that was in 12.6 we're on 14.1 coming on 14.2 on august 22nd so our docs, and I really think our docs are pretty, pretty, pretty good, um, honestly. Like, I don't know, I'm, I'm partial, but I think, I think our docs do a pretty good job. Obviously, we're always looking to improve. So if you're in our docs, 
and something isn't working for you or it's hard to find something or you think the information is a little light, tell us. Uh, open up an issue in GitLab, let us know. And we are absolutely more than happy to uh, take any suggestions that we can to improve. We've got a forum. We got GitLab on Stack Overflow. Any questions that are tagged as GitLab? Everyone knows Stack Overflow is where you go to figure out what's going wrong. Um, so if you've got a specific question, you check here first, see if someone else has asked it or if it's getting a lot of engagement. And then you can always follow GitLab status or head to the status page. Profile and status, pretty straightforward. It's very, you know, surface level. Setting up your profile lets people know you. One of the things that we have in the profile now is pronouns. I always capitalize it and I feel like I shouldn't because then I feel like Jesus. Uh, if your name is pronounced uh, non-English phonetically or if it's a specific pronunciation that you, um, you know, always get your name mispronounced, you can write it out phonetically here. Your email, don't show your email on profile, my commit email, Skype, LinkedIn, Twitter, website, all this stuff that you can have. Um, and that way when people look at your profile, they can see you. And the pronouns is actually available on hover. Um, if you hover over somebody's profile when they've like commented on something, it'll show you their pronouns. So when you go to talk with them, it shows you exactly how they prefer to be uh, addressed. You can see my activity is a little, little light. I think my work one is a little uh, better. Yeah, my work one's a little bit more active. Um, and I keep my work one on dark mode because that's the one I use more often. I keep my personal one on light mode because it helps me know immediately what I'm on. If GitLab's in light mode, I know I'm on my personal account. If it's in dark mode, I know that's my work account. And the pronouns came with GitLab uh, 14, which was July 22nd. Or June 22nd, actually, was 14. And that. Did an emoji, made a status, updated my personal settings. One of the reasons you might want to consider using GitLab is for RCI CD. In addition to the, uh, in RCI CD, you can use uh, Docker engines, and that's where you're going to test and build your application. And to make that happen, it's a pretty uh, straightforward process. You just kind of say, use this image <laughs> at the top. So, as you don't know, Docker is an open source project that allows you to use predefined what are called images to run applications in independent containers that are run with a single Linux instance. So Docker Hub has a bunch of pre-built images that can be used to um, test your applications. And that's the advantage of why you would want to use GitLab in the first place is because we make testing easy. So if you're using it with continuous integration, Docker runs each job in a separate and isolated container using the predefined image set up in your gitlabci.yaml file. So to show you what that looks like, let me take you to my divas. My divas, uh, when I update the main branch, automatically deploys to Heroku using instructions that I wrote in this file. So you can see the image. I'm using the latest node image from Docker. When this runs, uh, I'll show you a log actually um, after this. Uh, this is all the stuff that runs before anything else. You have to declare what stages there are in this. And really the only thing I use this for with my divas is for um, uh, deploying to Heroku. And for Heroku, when I looked up uh, the instructions on how to deploy to Heroku, it suggested using Ruby, so I did. And then I've got these uh, variables here that Heroku knows, and it just sticks it right on my Heroku instance. So I'll show you guys. Let's see, let's go to CI/CD. So again, this collapsible sidebar over here. CI/CD is the little rocket. Go to pipelines, you can see previous pipelines that I've run. 
Um, so each pipeline, like I said, has a set of stages, and each set of stages has a set of jobs that runs. And you can click in and you can see the jobs here. So it's called production and the stage is production. So, like I said, it picks a runner. And in this case, it's just a shared runner from GitLab. Tells you its number and everything. And it says we're running on Docker. Whoop. Pulls the image, prepares the environment. Grabs the variables that it needs. Sets the updates. You can see in green, that's when it's a script that it's running. Another script. Another script down here are those uh, variables, right? Prepares to deploy, cleans it all up, deploys the application. Down at the bottom, cleans up everything, and then lets you know that the job succeeded. Um, on the other side of that is Heroku. So um, I used to run all of these uh, applications as separate apps and each one had its own dyno and I ran out of free dyno minutes very quickly. So that's why when we're looking at um, my divas, which are my Twitter bots that I have, uh, connecting these two, connecting GitLab and Heroku, I actually looked up an article to do. There's as anyone who's been developing for a while knows, there's instructions for literally like almost everything out there. But uh, we can view the logs here on Heroku of what's happening. And here we can see it tells me that it tweeted at me. Uh, we also have under activity. You'll see the last time I deployed. You can compare the diffs. You can view the build logs here. Real good content. Real good content. Thanks, Jelly Man. You embarrassed me in front of everyone. Real good quality content. Um, ba -ba -ba. Let's go back to this. So like I said, uh, this is where all the CI happens. And uh, using Docker is as simple as just firing an image at the top. So like I said, the reason you'd be using Docker is because it's a, a reproducible build environment that gives you everything you need in order to test out your application. It makes sure that it works. So when you deploy it, you don't have people going, it doesn't work. So there's tons of documentation on it. Um, how to use a container registry, how to specifically use Docker images, how to install Docker within GitLab. Hey, it's me again. Just wanted to wrap up this video and let you know if you wanted to learn anything else, be sure to check out our docs. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to tag me on Twitter at Metzen Around. I think I'll put it right here ding so if you want to uh, let me know on there how you're doing with your uh, learn modules if you have any questions i can help you find the answers uh, but i hope this has been useful for you i hope this is beneficial and i hope to see y'all online see you around